You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist Kinsman and Mike Benyon Rowe. I nearly came in my short shorts. Oh, hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. What is it you've got on your top? Um, well, you know, uh, we're going to be speaking to Jordan later. Uh-huh. Last time we saw him, he was uh, a bit into d and I thought I'd wear this for him. Right. Not that kind of dungeon. No, no, Dungeons and Dragons, not, not oh. nothing salacious or saucy. I don't do that sort of thing because I'm a good boy. Because no one will do it with you. What have you got for us today, Mike? <laughs> well, today I have a story about a mouse. Well, actually several. Um, and then we're going to be speaking to Jordan Charles about his latest project in Spotlight. We even have a game to play in our game of the week, but on screen now you will see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as the names of people who've dropped us a line go along the bottom of the screen, we go over to Grandad and the Showbiz. We're going to start off with a, a, a bit of a grim subject. Oh, OK. Have you ever had homophobic abuse shouted at you in the street? Did you go Scouse, then? Did it Scouse? It's Scouse. Street. Street. Yeah. Um, I have, yes. It's horrible, isn't it? It's not pleasant, it's yeah. not fun, it's not delightful. No. no. Well, there's been um, a, a bit of abuse that's happened with a celebrity from Hollyoaks. OK, using the word celebrity loosely there. <laughs> a little bit. But they were um, out with one of their uh, colleagues from the show, mm -hmm. um, who they work on the same show together. They've become really, really good friends. Um, it's Kieran Richardson, who plays Steve Hay, and his best friend Georgie Porter, I think I'm pronouncing that properly, um, who played Theresa McQueen. And they were chatting on a podcast recently and uh, telling this story, basically, about uh, when they were trying to get a taxi. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, just suddenly got people hurling abuse at them. And even if you're the most bravest or the well-built person... It takes you aback. It takes mm -hmm. you right back to school when you're getting bullied and everything like that. And it, it does shock you. And then at another point, you got a bit brave and tried to shout back at them. They backed off and then started again. You know how those situations are. We've all experienced it, and it's absolutely horrible. Uh, but his friend, Georgie... Um, she was reflecting on it and she gave them hell. And she actually, because we live in a modern age, recorded them. Mm -hmm. nice. Clever girl. Um, she said, that's my best friend. And anyone who starts with my best friend, I'm like, I'm having you. I don't know what she sounds like, but I'm going with this voice. People knew who it was, so I don't... So I think that they actually got fired from work. Yes. Uh, but it was just a massive shock that that kind of thing still happens. You wouldn't want it to happen to anyone, especially not Kieran, who is the best man in the world. Ah. Oh. Yeah, and I thought that's really kind and good allyship, mm -hmm. and yeah, it is crazy that that stuff still happens in the world, but it does, and uh, yeah, good for standing up for yourself. Yeah, and I think I think we need more people standing up for each other as well. Mm -hmm. So I know I've witnessed people hurling homophobic abuse, and I've gone, ah, I'm gonna put myself in danger, and you do get that moment, and you've just got to go, no, <laughs> mm -hmm. and go for it. Because exactly. they do back down as soon as you start giving it back to them. Yeah. So. But these are just scared in the end. It's true. <sighs> Moving on yeah. to something a little bit more uh, just want cheerful. Just to point out he had his nipples out in that picture. He, he did have his nipples out in that picture. Yeah. I had a friend who was in Hollyoaks once. Okay. He was only in it for like three episodes as a policeman. All right. Yeah, he did a very good song afterwards called Whatever Happened to Eddie. Check it out on YouTube. Shay Watson, hello. How'd you do? Yeah. I was in Hollyoaks once. Were you? Yep. So back in... Uh, I'm going to say back... I was about to say how old I was then, not doing it. <laughs> back when I was in school, mm -hmm. I went to school in Chester. And okay. it was when they filmed Hollyoaks in Chester. Actually, it actually, actually was in, in Chester. Chester. Um, and they and they, Chester's got the rows, which is like two rows of shops, like double-decker shops. And I was sat up there eating a Sayers sausage roll, which shows my age as well, because I don't have Sayers anymore. Tibbs or something there. Um, eat a sausage roll and the camera panned past me. And then six weeks later, I got a clip round the ear from my mother going, Saw you on Ollie Oaks. Go to school. <laughs> you and your sausage roll. Wasn't I? I was a fat kid, I had three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on to something a little bit more cheery. Okay. Heartstopper is coming back. 
Yay! We're all big fans of Hearts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So season three is coming. It's it's not going to be until October. Okay. But because we're all good fans and we're we're excited about it, people are already speculating about what's going to happen and who might be in it. Okay. Now, there is speculation that there is certain people are going to be cast in the show Mm -hmm. and there's been a series of images circling around showing Jonathan Bailey of Bridgerton. Nice. Yeah, there's that fella. Nice. So, these series of images show him dressed very similar to a character in the graphic novels called Jack Maddox. Okay. Um, In fact, one of those pictures shows him with a book that is written by Jack Maddox, the character. Um, There's been no official or unofficial um, casting news, um, but the pictures were taken down rather sharpish, so it's a bit suggestive. And he's a clear ally of the show and, and, and of culture and stuff. Well, not an ally, he's actually one of us. Well, I'm very, very much looking forward to it. And I'm sure in the many months until October, there's going to be much, much more speculation as we all get overly excited about its return. Yes, a 100%. <laughs> now, are you looking for a little bit more news? It's, it's less about showbiz. Okay. It's more about something that's very, very important okay. and also very, very funny. Okay. So, in a desperate attempt to stay relevant, this Muppet has been returning. Do you remember about. Liz Truss? Oh, a longer serving Prime Minister. Shorting, shorter serving Prime Minister. <laughs> yes, not only satisfied with being a worst Prime Minister in history, which is some going after Boris, um, she's come back sponsoring a bill. Um, I'm going to read this out. These, uh, p- please, oh, it's just awful. She's sponsoring a bill called the Health and Equalities Act. And I like she's. It so far. Oh, mmm. Well, she says it would define sex in law as biological and end the, and this is the quote, absurd and dangerous situation where biological males, self-defining as females, can access girls' and women's toilets and so on, as well as sports competitions. She can f*** off. Yeah, she can. So, here's the funny bit, though. She has been frustrated in this, and it's very, very funny how she's been frustrating. Um, It never got heard, this bill, because of something called filibustering. Do you know what filibustering is? I love filibustering. Yeah. That's my (laughs) favourite thing, procrastination on an epic scale. Mm -hmm. 100% love it. So what they did, um, basically Parliament was debating another act beforehand, or another subject beforehand, called animal welfare. Mm -hmm. And... It, they just delayed her bonkers bill. Several MPs, actually, it has to be said, both Tory and Labour, mm-hmm. um, just kept the debate going so she couldn't talk. And they did this by um, talking about the names of ferrets. <laughs> yep. Um, so it, the MPs in question are Maria Eagle, Sarah Champion, Selene Saxby and Samantha Dixon. Uh, all hats off to you ladies. Um, Champion, uh, this is how the conversation actually went. I've watched it. it it's not in real time. There's mm-hmm. a lot of exact quotes, but this is how it went. Champion said, I'm interested that my right honourable friend is keenly mentioning ferrets at every opportunity that she can in this debate. So let me just put it on record that my brother had a ferret called Oscar. (laughs) Eagle then chips in. My honourable friend now has that on record. I do not really know what else to say about that, except that I am sure Oscar brought her brother a great joy. Has the right honourable member of North Devon ever owned a ferret? And if so, what was its name? We go on. Saxby then chips in. This is an excellent intervention. I will come to ferrets, but unfortunately I have not had the pleasure of having one at home myself. (laughs) And then they move off ferrets, unfortunately, in the the nomenclature. They then go on into Coronation Street. Dixon chips up. It's my honourable friend... Is my honourable friend aware of a recent Coronation Street storyline on precisely this issue? Not fair, it's the animal welfare. It involved an indomitable Evelyn, who's of course played by Maureen Lippman, and covered the issues around puppy farming. It was a strong and educational (laughs) storyline. Um... 
So, yeah, it's nice to see that there are some MPs who are not mm -hmm. lying, incompetent and immoral scum uh, with no agenda other than their own self-aggrandisement. Mm -hmm. Don't know who I'm referring to there. Trust. Um, but, yeah. yes, um, sadly, filibustering works both ways. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a uh, another bill being discussed in March uh, that was going to ban conversion therapy. Mm -hmm. And they did the same thing the other way around, so it never really got heard. So the ferrets are very, very funny, um, but it'd be good if Parliament just got on with the job and stopped horrible bills going ever through and stopped pretty sensible bills from actually being heard. And that's the show, Biz. Thanks for that. I can't really say anything funny on this one um, other than Liz Trust. Is Ooh, um, well, stick around uh, as it's Mike in the buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mist and Mike. Now let's see what he didn't put into his private browsing as it's Mike and the Buzz. Have you ever been to Australia? No. No. OK, because um, when you go into Australia, they have big signs saying you can't bring anything like fruits or vegetables or anything. It's very, very strict on their border control. Mm -hmm. Do you know why that is? Mm, because it's a, a completely different environment and you don't want to introduce foreign things. Because they have a problem with um, ants. They do? Mm. Very aggressive ant problem. There. Very aggressive ants. Ants. <laughs> Very aggressive ants. ants. Um, and, and the reason is because um, for things like this. Yeah. Right? There's an island in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. right, 200 years ago, someone introduced a mouse that was pregnant. Now they have over a million mice on this island. In Antarctica? Just outside of Antarctica. And because of global warming, these mice have been prolific. Rampant mice? Rampant mice, right? So much so that now the mice are eating birds because they've got no other food left. So these mice have gone rampant eating birds. Oh, how hot? Like, birds are big. Mm. Like seagulls and stuff. Mice ganging up and attacking them. Cute little furry mice. Oh, look how cute the little mouse is. Killer teeth. Right. Um, over a million on the island, right? Mm -hmm. and so they thought of how they're going to get rid of these mice and kill them off. They're going to use helicopters. Didn't they think a cat might be a good idea? A very hungry cat. Very a million hungry mice. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'd get one from Warner Brothers or the Looney Tunes. An imaginary cat. Yes. To get rid of these hundreds of mi these million mice. <laughs> um, no, what they're using, they're using um, helicopters that are dropping rat poison all over the islands to kill What's the, the rat poison going to do to the birds? It's going to kill the mice. It's still poison. What oh, if yeah. one of the birds like? Then down. Caca caca. Dead. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the the. This is the plan, because they, they've decided that they need to make sure that there's no mice alive, because if even one remains, they're going to have this problem again. So they're just basically going to nuke it from orbit like they're aliens? Yes, with rat poison. But I don't think that's going to work, because they're mice, not rats. Well, yeah. Roland the Ravager. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's a warning about global warming. Because up until like five, ten years ago, there weren't that many mice. They were kind of. I was going to say Antarctica is a bit chilly. A bit chilly. I would have thought oh. a little little creature like that wouldn't have survived very long. They, they do okay, but there's not many of them. There's not yeah. a lot of food. So now it's warmed up a bit. They can breed more, and run out of food. So they're now eating birds. So yeah, that, that's actually quite like animals are animals. They're going to eat each other. It's the circle of life. It moves us all. <laughs> I'm not going to sing because we'd have to pay royalties. But um, we're all thankful. Yeah, there's something about that that just seems it, a little bit disjointed it, and natural to me. It's the mice eating the birds that doesn't. Yeah, like me. it's yeah. a bit weird. Uh huh. Because um, we've all seen Hatch Hitchcock's The Birds. We'd expect it to be mm -hmm, the way around. Mm -hmm. I mean. um, but moving on, do you have a middle name? No. No. Mist Moonscape. No. no. Some people say Ickles. Mysticals. 
Oh, okay. I was just like, Nichols? <laughs> middle name? I have no idea why, but there's a lot of different people that have called me Mysticals over the years. But no, no middle name. Well, Mist just... is a bit odd enough. I don't need another. Were they calling you ball bag and you just misheard? <laughs> <laughs> Back to homophobic abuse, being shouted at me in the street. They're just calling my name. Oi, ball bag. I hope you see don't enjoy it. Uh, this woman called Rihanna, right, who has changed her middle name mm -hmm. okay, based on something she loves. Okay. okay. So she is now called Rihanna Marleybone, as in after the station in London. Oh, I thought you meant the fags. No. Um... So there she is, all right? She's changed her name legally. The reason why is because she's worked in the railways in London mm -hmm. for 20 years, and it's her favourite station. Mm -hmm. So much, it's not a big station. This is a direct quote. It's not a big station, but it has a big soul. So I thought people who are train spotters are, 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 are massive nerds. She's not a train spotter. Exactly. It's about the station itself. Exactly. Yes. That's that that's that's higher on the nerd scale. She considers it her home away from home. Right? And she said, unlike other train stations in London, it has a warm and personal touch. Well, who who am I to judge? If if it makes her happy, she's not harming anyone, is she? <laughs> Bonkers. But you know. Yeah. She was going to change her first name till her daughter said no, Mum, just no. What was she going to change her th first name to? Marlebon. She's going to lose her actual first name and change it to the name of the station. Couldn't she just change it all and go become Mary Lebon? Mary Lebon? Mary Lebon. Like Simon Lebon? Yeah. But Mary? Yeah. Simon Lebon? Yeah. Mary Lebon. There's a lot of people that don't get the reference of Simon Lebon. <sighs> Well, I don't think she's harming anyone and she's she should not. fill her boots and, and live happily as whoever and however she wants to be. Yes. And if you want to share your inner stories with us, why not do so at the Good TV on social media? And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. You're quite proud of your weight loss at the moment? You're going on a journey? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm getting there, yeah. yeah. It's, it's beginning to shift. Yeah, you, you came in this morning and told me you lost, you lost four quid or something down the back of the sofa. <laughs> Very proud of yourself. Um, well, this is a gentleman from Vietnam who has lost something a little bit more. Mm -hmm. okay. um, he went into the doctor with cramps. Mm -hmm. cramps. Very not well, right? And the x-rayed him and went, oh, there's something a bit weird there. More than a dicky tummy. Mm, we need to have an investigate. Mm -hmm. So they've, they've cut him open and pulled out a live 30 centimetre eel. Mm. from his innards. How the hell did that get in there? Well, mm. this, the man couldn't explain it. So when the doctor went, how's that happened? He's like, well, I don't know, mate. Obviously, in Vietnamese. Um, don't know, mate. Not sure, right? And the doctor went, hmm, there's only one way it could have got up there. Well. No, up there, because if he had gone down there, he'd have chewed and bitten and he'd gone through acid and it'd be dead. So it's gone up inside him. He, so, could, he could have had a very vigorous blowjob and then it could fallen have, off. He could have sneezed and just like opened and whoosh, yeah. in the eel. Yeah, they don't know how quickly it got in there, but they know that that's the way that it got in. Because Did he of, just have a dream one? It happened whilst he's unconscious and he just had a, a very, very nice dream about a big well, mum member. It would have member. had to have been in water because eels are, of course, water-based creatures. So what they've worked out is that it will have entered through his bum worked its way around his, his colon, right? And because of where it was, they, it then had to nibble through his colon to get into his part of his abdomen that they cut, cut out of. But how did he not feel that? Very slack ass. All I can say, it must have been a very slack ass. He doesn't know, it. he wasn't sure it happened. How? Like... I think what's happened is, he's fallen on it, right? You know that age old joke going, oh, did that happen? Oh, I fell on it. I, I, I wouldn't know a thing uh, uh, about that kind of scenario. Was that a light bulb? Did you fall on a light bulb? No. No! You'd be that person, wouldn't you? No! What did you fall on? No! Barbie doll? 
No, no, That's a yes. no. <laughs> I'm getting close. No. It's action, man. No, 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 no. No, I'm not it sticking live eels up my bum. I didn't say you were. I'm, I'm not I'm... rich in gear. <laughs> that's, again, that's, that's not an eel. <laughs> mm. It's a hamster. Um, I just, no, it's, it's, no. Like, you must have no. there's no way he could not have noticed. Exactly, and that's why the doctor's going, you didn't notice a, a, a 30 centimetre. That's, that's a not 12 a... 12 inch. That's an experience. Like, it can't happen in the middle of the night and you sleep all the way through it. That, no, because he'd have to have been in water. Yeah. So it'd have had to be, like, waist-deep in water. This is why you should lows. wear your little swimming bottoms. Your, your little <laughs> budgie, got, your budgie he's smugglers. He's a little swimming bottom. I think he's got quite a large swimming bottom. <laughs> he definitely has a large... If he didn't before, he definitely has now. Off I go. Slippery when wet, wet yeah. Um, you should watch out for those elephants in the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that's not watched that episode of the show, um, Mist once watched an elephant fist someone else. So, oh. Another elephant, not just someone else. But, oh, mm, no, that... Mm, mm. The, the eel can't consent, can it? It went up, so I think it can. Can eels go backwards? <laughs> beep, beep. Eel reversing. <laughs> eel reversing. <laughs> beep, beep. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I suppose if he enjoyed it, had an eel of a time. A whale of a time, surely. No, hell of a... Oh, God. Some jokes are wasted on people. And some people don't make jokes at all, but that's all from the buzz this week. I don't start giggling. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Oh, no, it's off. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Stick around. Coming up next, we've got um, a game to play in our game of the week. <laughs> welcome back. And yes, you are watching Chewing the Cud. And we're going to play the Gobby Game Show. And this one is for our very own gobshite, Mike. Off you go. I ain't giggler. <laughs> <laughs> Game of the week. So, are you ready to sing along in the Gobby Game Show, Mike? I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me your first tune. We'll see if I can get it. Oh, 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 oh. I, I think, I think, could, could you do it again, please? I think I nearly had it then. I think I think that might be the red hot chili peppers. Oh. I can't remember the name of the song. Oh there are a lot of people who I used to hang out with in rock clubs in the 90s wanting to punch me in the face right now. Oh, people here too. I, I can't remember the name of the song, but it is Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Under the bridge. Oh. Under the bridge. Oh. Under the bridge. Oh. I'm a an idiot. Oh, that one. Hang on, it's the last bit again. Oh, Oasis Wonderwall. Mm. Yay! <laughs> Do I get a prize for this? No. I should win something. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, go on. 
Oh, oh, please, more of the dramatic rendering. I, I want to see the performance. Is the performance more than the song? You do just look like you are groping the invisible man. Um, and he's having a lovely time. Uh, <laughs> 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 That, that, that's what you look like. <laughs> killing me softly. Yeah. Which version of it, I'm not too sure, but killing me softly. <laughs> no, you know. <laughs> You'd be lucky to be too sexy for Birmingham. <laughs> right, said Fred. I'm too sexy. Mm -hmm. You're good at this. Actually, I don't think it's me who should be winning the prizes. It's you. Uh huh. You should be. You should be winning points for successfully communicating. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. No, no. That, that, that's all I got. It basically sounded a little bit like a seal complaining of constipation. No, I haven't got a clue on that one, I'm sorry. No idea. <laughs> what are you doing to the invisible man now? Drain it in a bottle. Oh! Oh, um, yeah, I, I was never going to get that, I'm sorry. Okay. This is very, very, very much my era. That's tub thumping. And? Oh god, who was the band? It was like something project or something. There's a load of people being very, very political and making a wonderful pop song to do it. A wong hub. Say that again? A wong hub. Hubba bubba? <laughs> <laughs> I know what it is. <laughs> Chumba wumba. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to the invisible man now? Hmm. Hmm. Uh huh. Hmm. 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 That 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 that's that's what you're doing. <laughs> Can I have another song, please, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm sorry, I did not recognise that, but apparently the gallery have a guess, and the gallery's guess is... The bird is the word. Hundred. 
I, I did not know. Okay. I, I had no idea. Yeah. I, I was sans knowing. Okay. <laughs> There's a dinosaur. Look a dinosaur. <laughs> There's more. There's tons of dinosaur. Um, uh, that would be the theme to Jurassic Park. Anyone can fall in love. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Uh, I was. Did was it was it Anita Dobson who said? No, no, it was it was. Um, oh, who uh, replaced Sharon? Isn't it Letitia Dean? Anyone uh, can fall in love. Well, was it then? Was it not Letitia? Uh, who, who was it then? Uh, Anita Dobson. Uh, uh, yes, can, can I have another song, please, Mike? My life, Mike, are you trying to rap? I am rapping. Mm. I am rap. Mm. I am point. Mm. What? I, I can tell. I can tell it. it it's. It, I can tell that it, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. um, the chicken and bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, Caesar salad. Mm -hmm. uh, baby. Oh. Baby got back. Mm -hmm. That sounded nothing like it. And as Mike has a mental breakdown in the corner over there, I think it's about time we moved on to speak to Jordan Charles about his most recent project. Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. Now I've had him before, so we wanted to welcome him back as it's Jordan Charles in Spotlight. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've actually been here the whole time. They have not let me loose. Please, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Everybody knows we snack. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to fly. With you. <laughs> well, last time you were with us, you were telling us about this new musical. Yes. Why don't you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, I have been, for about 11 years, I've been writing um, this musical, Oya. Mm -hmm. It's a bilingual Afro-fantasy musical, so it's got words and uh, songs in English and Yoruba, uh -huh. which is a West African language, and there's also an entire Yoruba, obviously, culture and religion and mythology, and that um, Yoruba uh, religion and the Orishas, which is what they call gods, you can find them uh, in Nigeria, but also in Brazil and in the Caribbean and kind of, you know, all the places that um, you know our people have kind of ended up over the time, and so I wanted to uh, create this show to kind of explore that in a fun way. And how do you explore that? With some magic. <laughs> um, yeah. So, we, so our, our story is about uh, Tunde, a young uh, man who's born disabled, um, and it's set in a uh, fictional country in pre-colonial West Africa. And so uh, the people. Um, of the village when he's uh, born uh, disabled they actually uh, discard him from the village he's cast out he's cursed um, but at some point he receives the powers of Oya who's the goddess of wind and storms and weather um, and so he's able to fly and control the weather and so the show's about him kind of having these new powers and deciding how to use them and how to respond to the way he's been treated and you know how to move forward um, with some big old songs in there. <laughs> So that's a bit like a fairy tale. It's it's very that it's very fairy tale inspired. It's very kind of hero's journey inspired. You know, like it's yeah, it's it's kind of that. I've always been obsessed with fairy tales and legends and mythology and comic books, superheroes. So it kind of draws from all of those things, but hopefully brings it in uh, a new way. So hopefully it has a real kind of familiarity to people 
um, in a way, but also kind of feels new and exciting. Okay, cool. Um, and so when you say it's a, it's a musical, what kind of music is it? Are we, are we expecting sort of like high, big Beyonce, or are we expecting like Phantom, or where are we? Um, I would say it's, I mean, it's, so, so the, the whole thing as well as kind of mixing the two languages, but also mixing the two musical styles. And so it kind of has kind of really big musical theatre moments and elements, um, but also um, kind of really like joyful or deep and intense um, music uh, kind of drawn from uh, from West Africa, you know, for artists like Fela and, you know, the beautiful choral music and especially the drum rhythms. Um, we have an amazing, amazing uh, producer and MD, uh, Bobby Zion. Um, and he's actually worked with a bunch of different musicians, including drummers from Nigeria, to really get the the rhythms and the sounds, you know, really right. So it's a it's a it's it's a party. It goes some places, but um, yeah, at the sharing uh, last week, everyone was just dancing and having an incredible time. So you're collaborating with um, drummers, and you mentioned puppets last week as well. Yeah. I'm quite excited about the puppet. <laughs> I like uh, a puppet. <laughs> Everybody loves a puppet. Everybody loves puppet. <laughs> I'm glad you got that in there, because actually you have to say it if we say exactly. the word puppet, so exactly. thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so how, how collaborative has this process been? That that has been really um, the main thing that this uh, most recent time has been about. Um, so we've uh, received some incredible uh, money from the Arts Council mm -hmm. to do our R&D. Um, and actually kind of originally when I uh, was kind of putting together um, the process to make that happen, um, I really thought it was going to be about you know, me writing and taking time away. But actually it's become about the collaboration and essentially kind of, you know, like building the team and, you know, the, the people who are going to cheerlead this thing as it, as it, as it hopefully grows. Um, and so, yeah, we've got incredible artists. I mentioned Bobby Zion, our music producer. Um, we have an incredible um, uh, set designer, um, Natalia Natizhanek, um, who's been working with us, has created this incredible, like, lunar solar piece. And um, we've got Carolyn on the puppets. We've also been collaborating with um, aerial artists um, to, to, to kind of um, show the, the flying elements of this. And the, so, yeah, um, yeah, Tamsin and Joe and Zaki Musa worked with us. So it's been a whole... It's been a whole team effort um, and kind of having all of that housed here in the mill and kind of, yeah, couched in this beautiful place full of artists has been... You started perfect. this process 11 years ago. What, what, what started everything off? 11 years ago. <laughs> um, so I actually started writing the show um, as my dissertation at university. Um, and so then it was just pure imagination, right? Like I was just... Yeah, you know, I, like actually how to make this happen wasn't in my head at all. And so I wrote this mad show where people were flying and gods were appearing and there was magic. No limitations. And no limitations at all. And now there are limitations, Miss. <laughs> there are limitations. Um, Is there anything that you would, from that original idea or, or your early thoughts on it, that you wish you could have done, but from developing it, go, ah, that's not going to work? Do you know, we're... Making this show is actually an exercise in not doing that, actually, because I think the 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 impulse is absolutely there to kind of be like, okay, well, that was you know the dream of the twenty one year old, and that's not going to happen now. Um, and I think actually, and, and and I've been quite ready to do that. And other people who've come to the project have kind of said to me, you know, my incredible um, uh, business partner Cynthia. Um, you know, she she was one of the first people to say, like, no, we're not, you know, I'd be like, we, we can do it smaller, we can do it. She said, no, 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 like, yeah, we may, we might do it smaller on the way to where we're hopefully going to, but, you know, yeah, other people who've come onto the project have been like, no, we we also see, you know, the big thing. So it feels, you know, very, very big and very far away and, and quite impossible, but um, why why not? Why not try? And, you know, you mentioned previously about, you know, in, embracing your blackness and queerness. How queer is the show? I think this the, this current version of the show, so I'm currently doing um, some uh, one-person sharings of the show, so it's very inspired by like the oral tradition of, of, um, of African uh, kind of storytelling and, um, and, you know, kind of mythology and like, the passing down of history. So it's kind of very, very, very um, inspired by that, but it's also me in kind of my, you know, kind of cabaret performance persona. So I think these tellings of it are, are kind of like, yeah, some of the most... Kind of queer versions of it um 
And so, yeah, we did, did the first one uh, last week at the mill, which was incredible. Um, and then uh, we do, and then we've got another one uh, in London um, at the Phoenix Arts Club. Um, and yeah, it's just been an incredible, an incredible time to kind of tell this story with my lens of, as I call it, gay nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you referenced doing it as, as a trial, um, it isn't a mill. Um, and we were very lucky we actually got to go and see, and we've got a little bit of clip of that now. Then let me take you to a time long, long ago and a place far, far away. To a land where gods still walk the earth and magic still exists. From the outside, this world can be cold. But thankfully, he is not alone. Everyone just wants someone to hold. His best friend Dara and his mother live right there with him. Person I know. I mean, what an incredible performance that was. Thank you. Um, you can definitely tell it's a passion project for you. It really is. It really, really is. And it's been, you know, I've been, uh, we talked about it um, on the last show I was on, kind of uh, doing this full time for about seven years. Um, so I've enjoyed all of those seven years, but doing this project has has been yeah and it, yeah has I, I've, it's just felt right the whole time it really feels kind of correct it feels like yeah like a like a passion project and so it's been hard work but what were the working. lessons you took from these uh, shows then how long do you have <laughs> okay because let me tell you uh, there are notes <laughs> yeah very much so for myself mostly um yeah so much so much i think i've really I've, 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 I've found, you know, some really kind of uh, like nuts and bolts stuff, like just kind of finding out how to kind of get the most um, out of out of a day um, without kind of draining myself. Um, but also just uh, one, of, one of my friends, uh, incredible uh, drag queen, AstraZeneca, said to me, um, follow the fun, like follow the fun. And um, the times when this has been a bit confusing or a bit overwhelming, which it, like, you know, it definitely has been. Um, I've just lent into that. And in doing that, I've been able to, you know, fall back into the rhythm and get, you know, to the place that I want to go. So yeah, I think that's been the biggest lesson. And when you follow the fun, where's that gonna take you next? Hopefully to the top of a mountain. Let's see, let's see. Uh, but no, next to, uh, to uh, just uh, spending more time writing the show, to kind of like really just disappearing into this world and seeing what I can kind of create and imagine and just, yeah, having some more fun. Where can we see the show next? We're going to take some time to kind of uh, have a look at what we've done. Um, so but I think the next thing that people can do is just kind of uh, yeah, go and find uh, the clips of the musical and just um, share as much as possible. Um, so you can follow me um, at I am Jordan Charles on Instagram. Uh, you can follow Obsidia Collective, which is our production company, um, also on Instagram or obsidiacollective.com. That's almost the end of the show. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cud TV on all the usual places. Thank you for watching and thank you for coming, Jordan. I'll be back any time. <laughs> we'll I just saw Mr. Then. Potato Head, so I'm coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you all soon. Bye. Bye. That was good. Yes, well done, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>